and welcome on News Now, Belmont Journal, News Show and Community Update. I'm your host, Maribel Carvajal de Salazar. Today we are at the Beach Street Center with Nabani Vogel, the director of the Council of Aging, and Diana Bigelman, uh, the assistant director. Thank you for having me here. It's the first time doing live and in-person interview. Uh, we are going to talk about the reopening. Uh, thank you for being on News Now. So all the COVID restriction and state emergency have been lifted. Okay. And in late May, mid-June, the town life is going back to normal. Do you have an opening date for the Beach Street Center? Um, I'm happy to take that question. And we're happy to say that July 6th, uh, we will be doing a what we call a soft opening. So um, our doors will be open Tuesdays, Wednesdays. Those will be full days, 8 to 4, and Thursdays from 8 to 12. So we'll be open two and a half days initially. And then as we get more of our volunteer staff, um, who will feel comfortable working their shifts, then we will open more. Great. The closure of the building has never been at the end of the senior services. You managed to keep the seniors busy with online activities and classes and kept them with essential services like mm -hmm. transportation and food. Uh, what are now the expectations for the reopening? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're clearly um, going to continue our essential services and expand them again as more of our volunteer staff is comfortable coming back. Um, but in terms of the building reopening, that means that we're going to have um, the activities that we had on those days of the week. So I want to be, want the audience to be very clear that, for example, Tuesdays prior to uh, when we closed, we had a set schedule of activities, small group activities. Those will resume right away. Um, um, and our fitness room will reopen. We are prioritizing fitness and wellness for obvious reasons. Um, so, uh, so those programs will resume as they were prior. So um, that is essentially what's going to happen. Eventually, when we fully reopen, and that will be a process, as I said, you know, we want to do this in such a way that is smooth, not chaotic, and a good experience for all our participants. So as we add hours and days, um, and are at full capacity, then we're going to change some of what we do in that we're going to have hybrid programming. What that means is we've been doing a lot on Zoom, uh, and, and thanks to the Media Center, a lot of our programs have been recorded, and um, participants have been able to access that way when we start to do in-person activities, we hope to include um, an online uh, component to some of the more um, uh, health-oriented ones. Great, great. So what do you think are the activities that will start right away? Um, so we are getting our fitness classes um, up and running. We have been having them over Zoom. Um, and we are going to keep that as like a hybrid, so some will still remain online because I think some people are still maybe not comfortable coming back or what that looks like for them, so we still want people to be able to have that option um, to be able to still continue to do fitness and from the comfort of their homes. And then at some point, maybe they'll feel um, comfortable coming back. So our yoga class, um, we'll still offer that. Um, online, but we're also going to have one, a new one, Tuesday mornings that'll be offered. Um, our Strength and Flex class with Susan Barbato, which is really popular, she's offering uh, one online and then she's going to be offering one in person. 
Um, we're starting Tai Chi again in person. Um, we're adding some new fitness classes, um, one called Get Fit, which is um, a little more of a um, kind of like different exercises that people will be able to do, um, almost kind of reorient, reorienting people back into fitness. Um, we're going to be doing an aquatics, a water aerobics class that'll be at the Underwood Pool. Um, so we're doing lots of lots of different fitness classes. Um, and then all, a lot of our special events and special programs will be continuing those too um, because that, like I said, has never really stopped. Um, so we'll do different different things every month like we always did. Um, we have a lot of gardening programs. Um, anything that, that continue, you know, gets people still outside to be able to do things like that. Um, so uh, we're going to be doing ice cream every Friday because we want to encourage people to come and visit us and it's going to be hot. Um, so that'll be one way to get people to come. Um, yeah, so I will, we'll continue to do all of our programs. Um, I'm still talking to a lot of instructors to see if they would be comfortable coming back um, because as Nava said, what, what we were offering before we closed um, will be offered again when we open, but we have to make sure that the instructors are willing to come back and want to be able to offer those programs again. So, Since you mentioned uh, having everybody feel comfortable, will you be added, uh, keeping some of the restrictions like the mask wearing? So um, all the town, all the buildings in the town are, are what we call mask friendly. So we want people to feel comfortable masked. We will not be asking people, we will not be in the business of enforcing mask wearing, enforcing social distancing, um, because essentially these restrictions are off. We're not going to be asking people their vaccination status. Um, clearly, we very much encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Um, that is that is our wish, but we will not be asking people. It won't be a, um, uh, a consideration for entry. We hope everyone acts responsibly. Correct. And you have a station of uh, hand sanitizers throughout the, mm -hmm. the center. Uh, throughout the center and and even, and for people outside uh, who are on the patio right. as well. Sure. And you mentioned that you want to do a soft opening. Is this because you don't have people coming to volunteer short of stuff? Um, the reason that we're doing it part time is essentially because we are not at full capacity in terms of our staffing. Um, Early in May, we uh, sent out a survey to all our volunteers to assess who was uh, willing to come back and not. And at that point, people really weren't uh, feeling comfortable. Um, that's changed a little bit. And so the reason we're doing Tuesday, Wednesday, and part of Thursday is because that's when we have people coming. We did make um, a... Um, uh, a plea through um, a portal that the town clerk kindly uh, offered to recruit for volunteers. And so, uh, if, if I might say, if anyone in the audience listening to this um, is so inclined to volunteer their time, um, that would be graciously accepted. Um, and uh, they can call. Marie Poor, our volunteer coordinator, and her number is 617-993-2979, um, if interested. Um, I don't want to give too much in the way of, you know, what the responsibilities are because we like to, to, to tailor, um, but we, we do need uh, front desk um, assistance as well as um, people to help serve our lunches, and um, I may, I may, may I um, explain a little bit how we're doing our food programs in this period of time, starting July sixth, when we're open several days a week, but not all days a week, because it can be confusing. So. Currently, we have what's called grab and go, um, and since since this the shutdown, we've been able to offer lunches provided by Springwell 
um, for people coming to the center, and, and it has been a contactless um, transaction, people get their lunches and they take them home. Um, or for those individuals who did not feel comfortable even doing that, uh, we had our drivers um, deliver them. That's going to change as of July 6th. Um, all those people who were getting the meals at home be, um, and, and are not registered as home delivered meals clients of Springwell, um, they will no longer be getting those meals at home. They can pick them up and we will have a new option of grab and stay. So what that means is as of July 6th, the days that were open, um, lunch will be served inside in our multi-purpose room. The days that were closed will still have grab and stay, but they, but with the doors locked, people will uh, be able to have their lunches on the patio. So a little confusing, but they'll be able to have their lunch on the premises every day of the week. The other thing that changes is because the kitchen staff will be serving on the premises, um, anybody who calls in for lunch will have to indicate if they're doing grab and go or grab and stay because the kitchen will need to know how many lunches to heat up. So a little confusing, but we want this to work. We think this is the best way it can work for everybody. Now, but how the seniors will know about the reopening? We will have the information on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. on, um, on our website, um, but we will also be sending out a robocall in advance. And that robocall reaches all the people who have registered with us as users of the center. We have those numbers and that, that robocall will go out to all the people to notify them of, of what's going to be happening. And if somebody's not on that call, how do they register? Great question. Um, they can access the registration form on our website, www.beachstreetcenter.org, or they can call and we can send them a registration uh, in the mail or contactless um, at, you know, at, the, at the site. And it's the same with the classes. They just need to register that the classes have. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, we're still we are working on an online system that we're hoping will be ready for July, where it'll um, make registration for classes and programs much easier for people. Um, we're having people call our programs and registration line, which is six one seven. 9932976 and what we're doing is um, we'll email out uh, the registration to people and also included because I think people are concerned if the class is meeting outdoors what about inclement weather what we're going to do is automatically have a zoom set up for people so as soon as you get that registration you'll get the zoom link as well and you'll have that just in case we'll notify people if it's you know the if the weather is is too hot or it's raining we need to cancel you'll still be able to have your class online um, and then we'll we'll come up with a system for people if they don't have um, zoom or if there's something that is preventing them from accessing the class that they might have missed um, we'll, we'll work with everyone um, but yeah they can call that line and they can register um, and we can help them do that in the case of no volunteers will the town eventually help to get a full-time uh, staff well, uh, it's, it's a complicated thing. Right now, the town's finances are such um, that, uh, frankly, we were, we were very fortunate that we were, our budget was not cut and impacted this year. So adding a position along those lines, we don't see that happening. We did have a request for a social worker position, and that's been our priority, but that had to be tabled because, um, because of the structural issues with the town finances. So um, I, I should say that um, we, we have actually really liked having our volunteers uh, be the receptionists because it gave us 
um, another way to include the community in what we're doing. Uh, so it worked very well for us prior to COVID. This has been, frankly, the biggest challenge to us. Um, so we'll see how it goes. So uh, how many people you really need to move to the next phase? Well, we usually, uh, we need, um, we need about six, seven shifts still to cover because uh, as we get busier, we're going to need more than one person per shift. When we were operating at full capacity, we had two people at least at the front desk handling the volume. We don't know yet what our volume will be, but you know we're hoping to be at full capacity, in which case we, we will need a lot more. And your numbers, full capacity, were how many seniors? Uh, when we were full capacity, we were be anywhere between 225 and 275 people using this, the center in one form or another each day. So um, I suspect that, you know, that won't, initially that will not happen, but that's what we're hoping for. Correct. Yeah. That's a big number. Thank you. Thank you for your work. Can I, can I do one more plug? Yeah. I should say the supper clubs. We'll resume the supper clubs, which is always a big draw for people. So um, we're going to have a new van. The van only seats 14 people, um, but we're going to resume the supper clubs, which is always a big draw for people. So What is the supper club? Supper clubs were um, Tuesday evenings. Uh, our bus would take people to local restaurants, and they would go out to eat. Um, and they were so popular, we were offering two a month. Um, I think we'll slowly get to that point too, um, but I'm excited to resume those because I think people really liked going out and just the interaction with people. So that'll be that exciting. That sounds like a great yeah. club. Yeah. We will have the number on the screen if you are interested to volunteer to the center. The senior center needs our hands so we can continue with these services. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for and thank you all for watching.